I'm Nintendo. And yeah, I'm Sega. Thanks, I got it all! Ultimate Edition. It's got a bunch of rare deleted scenes. Awesome! Pop it in! I did not see that coming. I kinda did. Yeah, let's check out this one. It's Jamie and Lee's dance scene, but with a different voice. A celebrity voice. Ooh, I wonder who it is. Hello? Hi, I'm really looking forward to meeting you. My name is Michelle. And my name is Zed. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I was actually gonna see if you wanna play part cheesy, but you can take off your clothes and dance too. You like Police Academy? Maybe we can act out some scenes. But I thought you only liked to watch. Sure we can watch. Let's watch all the Police Academy movies, even Mission to Moscow. That was... weird. Yeah. Not sexy at all. Can I borrow that later? Or... No. Okay. Oh look, our boy's back. Weird Al, this time with a parody, Terrible Lie by Nine Inch Nails. In this movie, Arnold plays a spy. He's always joking, and only bad guys die. Jamie Lee Curtis' secrets make Arnold sick. Bill Paxton's character has got a little d True lies! Lies. Another great parody by Weird Al. He should do more Nine Inch Nails. Remember Germs? Such a great song. Oh, check this out. A John Lovett screen test? Eh, women. Can't live with them. Can't kill them. I know a guy downtown. $17 and some fresh towels. He'll take care of it. Thank you! I wouldn't do one of Arnold's lines. Sure, here's my invitation, bang! And then here's my RSVP! This is already going great. Now I want to try one of Jamie Lee Curtis's scenes. I mean, I don't get up, don't get up. I don't even need a pole. I got this mop. Yeah. Ah, ah, ah. Help me up. Help me up. Help me up. Where are you guys going? All I said was, help me up. That was interesting. Not sexy at all. Can I borrow that later? No. Or? That's fair. That's fair. I'm getting all nostalgic watching this. Kind of makes me want to play the video game. Oh, yeah. Such a fun, violent game. I played it all the time for the Sega Genesis. Right. But it was better for the Super Nintendo. What? That's it! Are we doing this? Do scientists predict that in approximately 7 billion years, the Andromeda and Milky Way galaxies will fuse and make one super galaxy that'll be the largest by far in this section of the universe? Yes. Best True Lies game. True Lies was a top-down run and gunner. It was based on the movie of the same name and released in 1994. There were games made for Game Boy and Game Gear, but today we're looking at the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis versions. Both games were developed by Beam Software, the Super Nintendo game was published by LJN, and the Sega Genesis version was published by Acclaim. Both games are very different from the portable versions, but very similar to one another. Which game is better? Let's find out. Hey 
These games look almost the same. It's pretty close. Both games have the same top-down view, and everything pretty much looks the same, from the characters to the character animations. The only difference you might find here is the occasional different colored outfit. Other than that, they're pretty much identical. All the levels look the same too. You have the chateau, the mall, the park, the subway, the docks, the forbidden city in China, an oil refinery, overseas highway, and an office building. There's some differences here too. Some objects are different colors, there's different labels on cargo, and then there's even different names on stores in the mall. But overall, very similar looking levels. Small differences, but nothing that really gives either game an edge. Actually, there are some differences. Side by side, mine has- You better not say better use of color. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say that. I was gonna say my game has superior handling of the chromaticity. What does that mean? Better use of color. The Super Nintendo game is able to utilize the darker colors more, particularly the shadows. It can get much darker than the Sega game. The shadows give objects more depth and definition. One level that the darker colors really look better is the park. Look how much more definition the hedges have. And not only are the shadows darker, but the greenery too. It makes everything look more natural on Super Nintendo. By comparison, the Sega game looks nuclear green. Okay, so one level kinda looks better in your game. That's hardly enough to win. Well, my game has more details. Let's start with the warehouse. Look at the bricks on Super Nintendo. While mostly the same, occasionally you'll see clusters of bricks that look worn down. On Sega, the bricks all look the same. No variation anywhere. Now, look at the docks. On Super Nintendo, the ground is made of tiles that have dirt, cracks, or holes. On Sega, no tiles. Instead, you're on dirt with some holes and rocks. It doesn't look as detailed as the Super Nintendo game. Now check out the bathroom, specifically the shadows. On Super Nintendo, you can see the tile pattern in the shadow. On Sega, you don't see the pattern. It almost looks like new tiles entirely. And lastly, the park. Check out the tile path on Super Nintendo. There's some greenery around each tile in different dirt patterns too. On Sega, you have the greenery, but no dirt. Completely clean tiles on Sega. Makes the Super Nintendo game look a little more realistic. It's not much, but it's enough to give the Super Nintendo game the edge. For having superior handling of the chromaticity and having more details, best graphics go to Super Nintendo. Just like graphics, the presentation is very similar. Yeah, both games have the underwhelming cutscenes. Both games have cutscenes between stages that are just stills from the movie. They look fine, I guess, but movie stills are boring and they barely give you any plot. And they're pretty much identical. One cutscene on Sega is two separate pictures, while in Super Nintendo they sort of combine it. It really doesn't make much of a difference though. There is one decent in-game cutscene during the ending. It's not too bad, and you kinda wish all the cutscenes were like this. They're also identical for both games. The other in-game cutscenes consist of Tom Arnold's character popping up from time to time, usually when you beat a level or get a key item. You do get a bit of a standoff with the main villain from the movie, Aziz, even though you don't actually ever fight him. It's not much to compare here. Yeah, there's a couple differences. Let's start with the HUD. They're identical in both games. You have your life bar, Harry picture, and various weapons. On Super Nintendo, your selected weapon is colored while the others are faded in gray. Same with the bullet number. Easy to know what weapon's equipped. On Sega, it's a little confusing. Sure, your selected weapon is colored, but the bullet number isn't. It's white, and all the weapons you're not using are bright orange. That's a little backwards. You might think you have the wrong gun selected. Sure, it's only confusing for a second or two, but sometimes that's all enemies need to kill you. And let's look at the password screen. Both games have them. On Super Nintendo, anytime you enter a password correctly, you see authorized. On Sega, you don't. You only see authorized for cheat codes, never for the level select. Those are such ticky tacky differences. Access granted, bullet number color. I have a real difference when it comes to presentation. So hold on to your butt. Let's talk about what happens when you die. On Super Nintendo, there's a red flash and then nuclear destruction. On Sega, you get a gray flash and then, whoa. Look at that nuclear destruction move. Who needs mode seven? That's your gambit, a wavy nuclear bomb. Well, it's better than numbers and words. And let's face it, neither of the differences really gives either game an edge. Oh, not really. 
Does this mean tie? Super Nintendo has a slightly better HUD and more authorized. And Sega has a wavy nuclear bomb. But both games have the same boring cutscenes. And nothing gives either game a real edge. Presentation, Presentation is a, a tie. tie. Both games have the same music and sound effects by Marshall Parker and Dominic Maravito. And both of our games have all the same songs. Decent sounding songs here. But my quality is obviously better. What? It's all in the instrumentation. The bass and the drums are so much better on Super Nintendo. Sounds weak on Sega. How can you deny that Sega sound? And besides, your game barely uses the main theme. When you start the Sega game, you hear the main theme. <laughs> On Super Nintendo, you just hear the song from the first level. Super Nintendo just has a quick clip of that theme during the ending. Okay, so I still have the song. Plus, my game uses the music better overall. Let's go back to the cutscenes. During cutscenes on Super Nintendo, you hear the music from the upcoming level. On Sega? No music. Talk about boring. So your game reuses music. Big deal. It's better than silence. Plus, my game has more. Both games have a level where there's no music, just ambiance. Super Nintendo does this again with the docks. You know, ambiance. What does Sega do? Reuses the main theme. You know where the Sega uses the ocean ambiance? For the ending. When you're in a plane over the city. Makes all the sense. Plus I have one more song than you. Check out the credits. On Sega, they reuse the main theme, again. On Super Nintendo, new song. That's not a new song. It's the same as the mountain track. Anyway. Your sound is still worse than mine. Just listen to these sound effects. Here's a flamethrower on Super Nintendo. Sounds like a flamethrower. And now on Sega. Not even close. Here's when someone gets shot on Super Nintendo. Nice and clear. And now on Sega. So distorted. Here's a train on Super Nintendo. Sounds like a train. And now on Sega. It's like a weird sucking noise. And here's the plane during the ending. Sounds like a plane. On Sega? Yikes. Super Nintendo definitely has the Edward sound. For having better quality tracks, music during cutscenes, more ambiance, and better sound effects, best sound goes to Super Nintendo. Game
gameplay is identical. Both games are top-down shooters. You have one button to shoot, one to strafe, one to roll, and one to switch weapons. Your main weapon is a semi-automatic pistol. It has unlimited bullets, but needs to reload every 15 shots. You also have a shotgun, an Uzi, grenades, mines, and a flamethrower. All these weapons need to be found every level since you always start with just your pistol. All these weapons have limited ammo. Like we said before, there are nine levels. Most levels are made up of multiple stages. And there are lots of enemies spread throughout each stage. Sometimes there's also civilians. If you accidentally kill too many of them, you lose a life. The objectives of each level can vary from killing a boss, to destroying certain objects, to just making it to the end. Some variety, but not much. One level is completely different, the Overseas Highway. Here you control a Harrier jet and have to take out certain vehicles. These are long games too, and really hard. Each level is fairly long, especially since some of them are made up of multiple stages. You do get a password though, so you don't need to beat it in one shot. Good luck beating it at all. They're very difficult games, there are enemies everywhere. The game gives you health and lives, but the odds are still stacked against you. You need a lot of patience to get through this game. How are we gonna do this? Pretty much everything's the same. Well, we do have cheat codes, and those are also identical. Both games have pretty standard cheats you can enter in the password area. You have level select, infinite lives, invincibility, and infinite continues. There's one that lets you shoot innocent people without losing any lives too. Nice. One password that turns all the health into cheese, and the shotgun and shotgun shells into fish. Okay. I think my game might have an edge here. The Sega game has a password that no one knows the purpose of. You put in lethal weapon and it says authorized, but it doesn't seem to do anything, and nobody knows what it's for. Oh, I have the password too. Lethal weapon, but no known purpose. Well, I still think I got you beat. On Sega, there's a cheat code that turns you into a super fast, chainsaw wielding, smiley masked psycho. This is truly the best way to play the game. And it's Sega exclusive. I mean, you can do it on Super Nintendo, but there's an issue. On GameFAX, it tells you to activate the cheat on Sega by pressing Z and B. You could easily do that on a Sega controller. On the Super Nintendo page of GameFAX, it tells you the same thing. But there's no Z button for Super Nintendo. Okay, B on Sega is shoot. But even if you use the shoot button with every other button on Super Nintendo, you still never activate the cheat. So, how do you like that? The cheat code does work on Super Nintendo. Ah, crap. No Z on Super Nintendo, but if you hold L and R and the weapon select, the chainsaw cheat works just fine. Well, I think I have one more password that... No, no. Nothing's different. So, I guess that means... Tie. Since every aspect of gameplay is the same, including every single cheat code, gameplay is a tie. Both games are almost identical. At the end of the day, it came down to which one looked and sounded better. And that game is True Lies for the Super Nintendo. It has better graphics with superior handling of the chromaticity and more details in the levels. It has pretty much the same presentation with some very minor differences in both games. It absolutely has better sound with better quality tracks, music during cutscenes, more ambiance, and better sound effects. And the gameplay is identical. The second game is very similar, there's just some limitations in the graphics and sound department. They're roughly around the same price too, so the Super Nintendo version will give you just a little more bang for your buck. Best True Lies goes to Super Nintendo! Well, that was fun. I guess. Man, I was so close! You know what cheer you up? More deleted scenes! Oh yeah! Yeah! Yeah!
I should be in a movie, man. I'm in the best shape of my life. What the hell? I should be in a movie. They'll all come up to me and be like, hey, Rock, when are you going to do another fight? And I'll be like, I'm not doing that because I should be in a movie. Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> no more bullets. <laughs> what are you gonna do now? Cheat code. The what? So you have a chainsaw to my gun? I mean, you're like 100 feet away. I'm still gonna be able to shoot you before you even get- Oh! Oh, that felt good. My dearest Deidre, I know times have been tough for us lately, but good news. I got a new job at the docks. We'll finally be able to afford that surgery for little Lionel. I swear on my life, he'll get that retainer and fix his hideous grin, even though dog won't go near. And we'll be able to finally be able to get you that prosthetic leg. Your hopping days are over, baby. Most importantly, we'll be a family again. You can stop living with your friend, Ted. Hate that guy. Eternally yours, Deacon Sider, the third. Man, this docking sure is hard. I thought it'd be a little quieter working at night, though. What is all that? Ah, it hurts so bad! It's not even that kind of movie! I'm gonna miss you all! Deirdre, Lionel, not you, Ted! Thanks for checking out our latest video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Support us on Patreon for early releases, bonus content, and the Discord. And check out our live channel, Console Wars Live. And be sure to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more Console Wars goodness. Later! Well, that was fun. I guess. It was so close! Ow, my lip. <laughs> <laughs>